in the service sector where we are building bridges and we're trying to simplify people's lives. Everything we do, we're running from or running to. Expectations never change. My core values never change. I don't compromise who I am to be able to lead somebody. What's up, guys? It's Sean Black with Service Evolution. Man, I am excited today because I'm here with Jim Robinson. What's up, Jim Robinson? Well, let's go to work. Let's deliver some content. Man, some value bombs coming your way from Jim Robinson today. I can feel it. I can let's feel go. the juice. It's going, ready, it's man. going, man. We are going to be talking about the power of atmosphere and really creating an environment uh, to set your team up for success. And I, this is, I know it's a big thing. It's always kind of a trending topic, uh, you know, from COVID to working remotely to back in the office. And it's important. And, you know, so I think for a service industry, we talk a lot about teams and connecting with teams and creating that environment with them. So I wanted to kind of get your feedback on this subject and, and see what we can dig into here, buddy. You're going to be good. Good. Let's tear it open. Let's go. Let's tear it open. What do you think is the right environment for creating exceptional service? Let's just start with that. Uh, creating exceptional services based on your delivery. And your delivery is a little bit of research reflecting on who's buying, who's the customer. And if you are in a very specific vertical hospitality, as an example, you can you can surmise what they're coming in looking for, and then that's what you're going to deliver on. And the other day I was checking into a hotel. This is a great little story. One of the things that kind of takes up my time getting checked into a hotel is they want to give you the rundown of the city, the whole hotel. They want to give you all of this contact and information. They're trying to maintain, you know, they're trying to keep you present for a longer period of time. I lose my interest in that in about a nanosecond. And the other day I'm checking in to a hotel and I was at a conference in Nashville and I'm checking in and the gal checking me in got very specific, just said, here's this, here's this, here's a map of the facility. Is there anything else I can help you with? And it, it wasn't that busy, but they've refined the check-in process so nicely that I could have easily inquired and she would have divulged all kinds of information. She got very specific. It took 30 seconds. I was off to the room. I had a key in my hand ready to go. So knowing your buyer is really, really important. Um, it's uh, You deliver exactly what they're looking for. They'll never leave you. And I'll go back to this hotel in a second. And the, hosp the hospitality was great. The service was great. Everything about the hotel was great, and the check-in was exceptional compared to uh, in the past or other places I've frequented. So do you think what was driving that behavior? Was it the environment? Was it the management? Was it the leadership? What does that look like for you? I mean, I, I know you don't know because you don't know exactly behind the scenes there, but what, what do you? what's your opinion? What do you think it is? Uh, I would have to say that they've been paying attention to what their customers want and the requests have probably, or the concerns have been expressed saying, why do you take, you know, 30 minutes of my time? I'm exaggerating. Why do you take 10 minutes of my time to check me in when you can just hand me a key and I can be off to the races? What is it that you're really trying to sell me in addition to me paying for a room? Because that's really what the approach comes off as. I suspect they've done enough research. They know what their buyers are actually looking for, and they're delivering exactly what their buyers want in consideration of their time. We can all do that in a much better way. Know what your buyer needs. Ask them how you can best serve them and set them free. Don't hold on to them for 30-minute uh, preaching session or, or a content session of stuff they don't need or want. They're, they're going to turn away. They're not coming back. And we got a phrase around town here in our company, they coach you or quit you. And they coach you or quit you for good reason. 
when they're coaching you, they're telling you what they need from you. They're saying, here, do this because I'm going to respond well. Or they quit you. That means they don't call back. They don't respond to the text and they don't respond to your emails. They coach you or they quit you. It's pretty simple to understand. And that hotel I was checking in, they'd been coached. And their leadership, their management levels are saying, geez, folks, let's change this. All of our offerings don't change. I bet you their sales in their, in their hotel haven't changed based on the entry into the facility. I bet because that has changed, it might have even gone up because people become curious and they try to try something new versus having something forced on them already rejecting it. Know what your buyer wants. They're going to coach you or they're going to quit you. Deliver what you know they want. So from a physical standpoint, as a business owner, I, I, I know it's important to create like a positive and supportive work culture. And I think a big part of what you're talking about is that and that coaching uh, you know, the, the, the staff members. But from a physical standpoint, the environment not only needs to look good, but also kind of be support positive behaviors and, and you know to enhance that customer experience in our office one of the things that we have is we have very uh positive sayings on the walls like you know and that's very much a planned thing do you feel like that's important in creating a culture for company and, and how does it influence people well it's 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 probably more massive than i even understand and i understand it probably about this big compared to what the capabilities are. <laughs> but here's what I'll tell you is if you're in the tech business, you better be positioned in an office that is tech related. From door hardware, the way the facilities are operated, the way the kitchen looks, the the employee lounge, it needs to be tech if that's what you're doing. In our case, we have a home, mostly home feel. We're looking for a more of a comfort area because there's a high demand coming at us and we need a little bit more of a comfort zone. So we're not techie in our finishes in our offices. We're more of a comfort driven uh, space. We don't have play zones. We don't have all that stuff, but we do have very comfortable. You're going to be comfortable being in this spot. And that that is really important that you align your space with whatever the demand will be on those, you know, on those people that are working, whatever you're, it is you're delivering. If you have an industrial space, you would want to have an industrialized environment. Your office decor would be industrial and your manufacturing in the back, you know, in the back 40 is industrial. You'd want to have an industrial office. So I think the space aligns. I was listening to, um, I forget his name. I so sorry about that, but he was a CEO for Ford, past CEO. And as I was listening to him, he says he took over running Ford, and he's looking at his executive team and his high management team, and he's looking in the parking lot and he sees Chevrolets and Lexus, and he sees all of these random cars. And he says, "These are my top players, and I'm selling Fords. This is an environment thing, guys." We got to drive Ford. So he made sure everybody had a Ford. You can drive whatever you want on the weekend, but here's what we're going to do in our parking lot. We're going to have Fords. And because that's what we sell, that's what we believe in. Otherwise, you're not part of this team. And it was pretty straightforward. And it was like a no-brainer. I mean, how in how would you, as an executive working for Ford, how would you not drive a Ford? So that, again, that becomes the environment piece you got to be in the role in which you're expected to perform or it's going to be in a conflict and it's going to be a challenge. If you're driving a Chevy trying to sell a Ford, it's going to be a problem. If you're in a techie office and you're trying to find comfort from the high demands of facility service, as an example, the high demand that's coming in all day long, you kind of need to be a little bit more comfortable. You got a little palm tree behind you there. You got some family photos. <laughs> I'm looking at all this, and you got some noise pads on the wall so it's not noisy from the other conversations. There's a comfort in that, and that's really important. So your environment is important. It's not everything, but it's definitely important. It should align with what you're doing. I'm saving up for the sleep pod. Yeah, I think you should get one. <laughs> there's a whole Midday space, there's a Midday space under your desk. It's under your right desk. there. <laughs> it's right there. You grab you a pillow and get on down there, and you're fine. Comfort. Years ago, years ago, I worked at Gap, 
And I don't know if you've ever known anyone who worked at the Gap, but these guys were the strongest sales organization in retail I've ever seen in my life. Like they in control their environment, their physical environment, everything. And they made you, you like they they made you, but you they pretty much insisted that you wear gap. And I, I, for for the people who work there, the hats off because man, they are a, a sales machine. When it, yeah. comes, when it comes, they just are, and they create that environment. That is the Ford thing reminded me of the Gap. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, a great it's, story. It's known up front. I mean, when you take over something, you start running something, you're going to be very candid about it. Here's the deal: you yeah. may not fit this team, but here's this team. Here's what we do. Here's where we function eight, nine hours a day. Here's what it looks like, guys, gals, everybody. Here's what it looks like. Yeah. Technology plays a huge role. I think, obviously, in shaping today's digital environment in workplaces um and i think certainly the service industry um how do you think that business can leverage digital digital environments to create seamless customer experience uh you know and and what kind of impact does that have like for us obviously we have what we're, we're like the matrix in here sometimes yeah. <laughs> you with all the and we need that right you definitely got to have technology to run your business. It depends on how much techie you need to be in the office. Um, we probably have a pretty good balance of that because we have some team members that are high techie. They're the ones that, you know, stand in line the day before for the new iPhone coming out, sleep in their chair on the sidewalk, and then boom, you get this new phone, and it's exactly like the last one. But <laughs> It's like me going to check in this hotel last week. It's the same thing. You know, they send you the link, load this link. You can have a uh, remote check-in. You just go straight to your room, use your phone as your key card. And as much as I don't want to be troubled with all of the salesy stuff at the front desk, I still enjoy the opportunity to check in with the front clerk or the, the management, whatever that is. It's like going to a bank. If you like going into the bank versus just do everything on your techie phone, I like to know my banker. I like to know who's running my bank. Uh, I like to know who's on the board of the bank. I'm not looking for more salesy approach. I'm looking for an environment where I feel safe that I can put money in and it's going to be protected and well managed. So I want to know the banker. I want to know the banker's. We bank in a couple of different banks, credit unions, et cetera, but I know all of them and I know their boards. And in some cases in the past, I've even participated. So it's just, it's a preference. And so your your space and where you're going to be is really important. Uh, techie wise, it needs to be aligned with whatever it is you're serving, however you're serving. It needs to be technology driven. Today is the only way we can get through things because there's a data tracking system we're tracked with what we're trying to accomplish. We do the same. Our system tracks everything we do. It gives us the historical data. We can look it up for the client. We can look it up for ourselves. It also creates trend patterns, what you're doing next, what does next year look like, and then you influence what's changing in environment, again, environment. So years ago when I was training, you know, certifying coach and, you know, psychology and all that, was that the people make the place, the place don't make the people. And I think this is important. And I used one of our employees as an example years ago. A PM we had never went on a vacation, didn't take vacation. He's finally going to take a vacation. You may have even heard me tell this story. And he was going to Portland, Oregon. You can have an opinion about this if you choose. You will. I, <laughs> I, I do. His name, his name, I'm going to withhold his name. Well, yeah. he, He's getting on the, you know, he's getting on this plane. He goes to Portland, has just this amazing time, and he comes back. And as we we call it wiffle, what I feel like expressing in our meetings, the very next week he's back from he's back in town, and so we get to him and he says, "I got to tell you, that was the best trip I've ever had." And he hadn't been on vacation in five or six years, and he says the people were so nice, it was just unbelievable. Sun was shining in Portland, Oregon. Hello. A full week of sunshine <laughs> in Portland, like, Oregon, highly unlikely. Uh, no. But he, he just said that the people were so amazing. They were so happy to see him. He had a great time. They all held the door. They all said please and thank you. And 
that just solidified it for me. One, I lived in Portland as a child. I'm very familiar with Portland. I'm familiar with Portland of today. And I knew no matter where we go in life, if we're smiling and saying please and thank you, working, expressing gratitude always. They say gratitude and hard work solves all problems. He expressed so much gratitude from the minute he boarded a plane out of San Diego to Portland that he was so full of gratitude that it exuded out of him and everyone coming in contact with him had an experience that was full of gratitude. Not that they gave it, but they received it first and then returned it <clears throat> because we get what we give. And to hear him tell that story, I'm like, man, this is super powerful. I'll use the story the rest of my life in coaching. It's really how whatever you give off is what you're going to get. And your surroundings, your space, your environment, you've got to contribute to that. Whether it's technology contribution, whatever gifts that, are, that you have. But in all cases, hard work and gratitude, it's going to make the environment a much different feel. And if everybody's on the same team like that, it's going to be a very different feel for everybody involved, including the buyer that's on the phone. You know, we always talk about having an attitude of gratitude. Yeah. And I think, you know, that goes a long ways with creating an environment that is that is nurturing for people. And uh, once you have that, you can get through bad days. You know, you, you can get through that with that environment and it helps you. I wonder how do you measure this? Everyone wants to know. Everyone's in leadership wants to know how do we measure something. How do we measure? Are we on the right track? How do we know it's the right environment? Have I created enough soundboards? Do we have sleep pods? Do we need, you know, what is it that we need that's going to create that next level environment? And, you know, I want to ask you what you think it is and how do you, how do you measure that? You're talking about the bank and your experience there, how do companies know that they're on the right track with the environment? Uh, it's tough. And, oh, yeah. There, there's no, I don't think there's a magic simple follow lines one through three to get your answer. No. What we've done is just we've paid very close attention to uh, people's participation. And mm. what, you, what you give, you get. And what you give, you have to continually give more of. So if you're giving something away to the company as a perk, that perk has to go up. There has to be an increase of some level. And so what you give, you get. And things that I've always watched is, in one of the chapters in the book, I, I've told you about it, it's called In Sickness and in Health. That's oh, just yeah. the name of the chapter. And it's really referencing when employees will call in sick. And I don't know the exact statistics, but the Monday after Super Bowl, you know, 80 million people or somebody are out sick on Monday. And it's really, really, really high. Shouldn't we just cancel the Super Bowl? <laughs> sure. <laughs> because it's, it's, it's jacking people up. Yeah. Because 70 people don't go to work that day. 70 million people don't go. I don't know the numbers. I'm just making numbers up. It's a lot. It's a lot. And how many thousands have they impacted, or in this case, they don't impact? It's significant numbers. So being able to watch the statistics when somebody's going to be sick is an environment factor. And when they feel overwhelmed, they're, they're just not going to come back. They, they call in sick, and then it becomes more frequent. You looked up the statistic, did you? I did. You know I was going to look that up. I couldn't I could resist. How many people Six, call in sick? 16.1 million Americans are expected to skip work a day after Super Bowl, and then another 8 million are expected to request the day off in advance. So 20, what, no, almost 30 million people? 30 million, and the viewership Dude. is the viewership is 70 something million, I think is what it was. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of How a lot. How many people actually watched the Super Bowl out of 330 million people in the United States? It's 70 wow. or 80 million or something. That's pretty that's significant incredible. numbers. That's significant. I mean, I think it depends on whose team wins, too. So, what you give, you get. <laughs> so, if you, you know, tolerate certain behaviors, those behaviors will increase. And if you uh, have accountability factors in place and you don't allow the behavior to continue, it stops. The sick days 
get diminished. You know, certain states require a certain amount of paid sick times. It, do they need them? Maybe. But your overall average is the more you give, the more they take. And so you got to just transition that into a, a PTO or a vacation time and then have your, you know, meet the minimums. Yes, people get sick. Of course, I do too. Everybody does. But after a Super Bowl, come on. Come on. Come so, on now. So environment. <laughs> so testing and measuring is for people's health on the job, when are they missing work and why? And just ask for that. If it's two days, then you're going to ask, you know, I need a doctor's release or something. Did you get hurt? Are you ill? Are you safe to come back? You got to make sure you're protecting them and other employees. If it's continually Mondays, years ago, there's a great story. Years ago, we had a gal come to work for us 20 some odd years ago. And there was Taco Tuesday. And then Wednesdays were sick days. And this was happening pretty frequent. And so she called in sick one day. And so I just called her and I said, you know, hey, I hope the tacos were great. Sure, you feel amazing today and you just needed a day off. But we really don't need you anymore because it's every Wednesday and it's hurting your client, but it's hurting your team. And you're setting a pattern for your team that they will mimic. You may want to come in today or not tomorrow. And oddly enough, she showed up in sweatpants and smelled like a goat and <laughs> <laughs> walks through the door severely disheveled. And I just said, this is great. We'll, we'll live to see tomorrow. And there's, there's a call to duty and we all have it at some level, but it's a responsibility not only to ourselves, but it's a responsibility to our team and they're counting on us to be present. And so environment impacts that. And I just changed the environment for this particular gal. And it decided, she decided, hey, this is crazy. I got to go. I like this job. This is a shame on me for being so self-centered. I'm going to come and be, you know, a little more general you know, centric for the team. And it, it changed her. I never had another day like that. And quite frankly, she's still with us. And she had, she doesn't call in sick. She just doesn't. And so environment she is a machine and I'm not going to name names because she'll kill me, but <laughs> it's just important that, that environment, we need to impact that environment. And if we would have condoned Wednesday sick days, those sick days would have still been continuing to this day, some 23 years later. So make sure the environment is corrected as leaders and managers. As soon as you see it, correct the environment, make it better. As I said earlier, making our office comfort, you know, based, um, it's, it's important because there's a lot of high speed stuff coming at us. Nobody calls us in the facility business to say, geez, my toilet blew up. And if you could come out in 60, 90 days, that'd be great. Take your time. We're not in a rush. Forget the flood. Don't worry about that. That's not what comes at us. It's coming high speed all day long, every day. And so our intent was, you see the blue wall is very much, it's calming, our other colors are the same thing. If you look at our brand and our logo, it's for calming. And that's really why we designed everything that way. It was really to create a comfort. So environment's really important. I love that, man. And I agree with you 100%. I, mean, <clears throat> I think the youth today call it a vibe check. I'm not sure if that's accurate, <laughs> but my kids would be so embarrassed by me. Yeah. I'm such a, such, such a dad thing to say. Vibe check, people. Uh, but you can tell when you walk into a business, man, if it, if the, if it's really a good environment for people, they love working. You know who I love going to go eat at in and out burger because they love, they freaking love working there and Chick-fil-A. They're both. Yeah. And that's that environment where, and I think I shared too much about where places I eat right now. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> but, but when I do eat out, I, I like those places. <laughs> but it's all about the environment, you know, and, and, and it's a huge deal. I think, um, you know, you were talking about designing this environment with the colors and, and what's in it. And I think designing and maintaining that supportive uh, environment can be challenging for people. Uh, and But it's definitely worth it. I mean, you ha it's definitely making your worth making your team feel comfortable and successful and have it. What is it? You're in the nest. You're in the nest, you know, comfort nest. But uh, I mean, I know there's challenges with this. What? Are, you know what are what are the, some of the 
the challenges that businesses face, you think, and, and how do they kind of overcome them? If I was going to ask you, that's what I want to know. Environment challenges. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, we create a comfort space. It may not be perfect for everybody. You in your interview process, you got to figure out what are they looking for? We know our space. We know the service industry, the demands that people can, can present. I was in a hotel, um, a few weeks back and, uh, it was really one of my worst experiences in a hotel ever. And it was uh, as best Western. And it was a very specific location. It was literally the worst thing I've ever experienced from an ownership responsibility standpoint. And the environment there just wasn't good. And I had a plug toilet and no vanity lights when they checked me in to a full hotel. <laughs> Word. That's horrible. And so I went down the day one. I checked in on a Sunday. That night I went down. I said, you know, hey, lights are out. And I just showered from travel. And the tub was full of water. And that's fairly disgusting to me. And so I went down. I said, you know, could you send up a person to fix the lights? No lights in the vanity. I literally used my phone. And... So they said, yeah, absolutely. Sorry for that. Can tomorrow be okay? And I said, absolutely. I'm going to go to bed anyway. Tomorrow will be a great day. So I went down the next morning, reminded them of the conversation. That tub was still plugged and there was no lights. And they said, yeah, absolutely. We're going to get this thing fixed. So I get home Monday night to the hotel room. I'd gone all day, 13 hours out of the room, 14 hours. I finally get back. Still no lights, tub is still not draining. It had drained down over the day, got my shower again, went down and asked again. They said, absolutely, well, sorry about that, we'll get that done. Next morning, ask again. I get home that Wednesday night now, so we're four days into it. Wednesday night I get there, still nothing, still no lights. And so I go back downstairs and I said, geez, you know, four days and the tub is out. And I still have no lights. And they're like, we have a very full hotel. You're going to have to leave. And I was literally booked there through Saturday. And they're like, you're just going to have to leave. We have nobody. There's nothing we can do about it. And four days of complaining is a problem for us. And if you're familiar, familiar with hospitality, but hospitality is a private, you have no rights to the space. And so I'm like, Thank you. I, I don't need to be here. If that's how you're going to treat your customer, I have no reason to stay. Thanks for the invite. I'll go pack and I'll leave today. And they literally never fixed the room. They never fixed the lights. It really one of my worst experiences. Normally, hospitality will take care of you. But there was zero ownership, literally zero ownership. And this was the owner and the manager that I had been engaging because they're on the early shift. So I had talked to the clerk at night and they said, Oh yeah, sorry about that, Mr. Robinson. And the next person would say, sorry about that, Mr. Robinson. We'll get it taken care of. And then they finally just said, we don't have the ability to take care of it. We don't have anybody to go fix it. And I said, oddly enough, I'm in the facility business. If I had the equipment and the tools, I'd have solved my problem. Do you have the tools? There's no tools. There was no way to solve the problem. One, they didn't trust. There was zero trust in their buyer, me, they could have done a much better job and the reviews would have been significantly different. I posted oh, yeah. a very, very oh, impactful yeah. review. Blistering. Blistering review. <laughs> it's an environment issue. They created a very, what I considered an unsafe environment. I don't know what was in that drain or what was coming out of that drain. I can surmise it was terrible. And not being able to see what else was in the bathroom was really a rough situation for me. It was an environment that I wouldn't want to repeat. I wouldn't expect anyone else to endure. The reviews other than mine were really good. And those reviews were because there was no problems. And it's easy to keep a very good environment for your employees when there's no challenges. It's very important that we manage the challenge to our environment immediately. Make sure that environment stays consistent when the problems arise, be an owner, whether you actually are responsible as an owner, but be an owner of the situation. These folks in Best Western don't do that. They didn't have it in this particular hotel. There was zero ownership and responsibility. And when the problem had arisen, they simply asked me to leave their hotel because they couldn't fix my room. 
and environment, as long as there's no problem, it was good for these folks. As soon as the problems came up, they had no ability to manage or take ownership of the of the hospitality they were asking me to pay for. And they ultimately did not credit me for those days. I've since wrote some letters and we'll get a response from their corporation, but really irresponsible in creating an environment, one, healthy, two, that I would want to come back to or anyone else that would read my reviews and so your environment's really important. And it's easy to manage your environment when everything is good. When things are challenging in your environment, that's when it matters most. Raise up, fix the problem, make sure you're staying consistent when it gets tough, because that's when it matters the most. I never thought that you would come up with a story that would top our red carpet in uh, <laughs> a hotel that we stayed in in Nevada. I, oh, put, yeah. I think that was, I think that one did. That, one <laughs> that was pretty dang close, man. Tops them. Oh, that's unfortunate, man. Their wow. response in the environment they were creating was just really, it was nightmarish. It was being in the service business, giving keynotes and talking about service space. And then I watch this unfold. It's really one of those nightmare things for me to experience. I've just not experienced that kind of level of response before. They literally did not solve the problem, nor did they care to solve the problem. Four days later, they just said, I have to leave because they can't fix my problem. Did you complain? Out, you're out. <laughs> I actually so filed, filed a state complaint. So Should. state could intervene from a health and safety standard. I'm very concerned about other people going there and the environment that they're going into. If they can't fix it when I'm having to leave, they're going to re-rent that room because it's a numbers thing. They're going to re-rent that room. And next person, you know, next the next guy or gal that shows up is going back into a room, no lights and a plugged drain system. It's dangerous. Crazy. Dangerous. See, it just goes to tell you how important environment is in any service industry, especially, especially service industries. Hospitality, it doesn't get much more important to have a, a good environment for your guests and a good environment for your people who work there. That's uh, right. And, and clearly he didn't really care. If you give a good <laughs> so, environment to your employees, they'll give that to your buyer. They'll give that to exactly your That's exactly right. Give them the right, right. environment. So we're going to wrap up here. Uh, but I have one question before we, we, we take off here. Business grows and evolves. Good businesses continue to grow. And, you know, assuming that they're growing because they've created a good environment. But as they continue to grow and branch out, especially in multiple states or multiple cities, how do companies really ensure that the environment is, I don't know if you can say it's the same, but it, but it is you got to have the same culture, the same environment, no matter where the location is. But we both know that that's challenging because every location has their own vibe for the for that city or from for that culture. Mm -hmm. So how's from an ownership standpoint, how do you make sure that I guess they're both successful, even if they're not exactly the same? Well, we we invite people's feedback. We also have, you know, smart people outside of our company that are contributors. And in circles of influence that I'm in, I regularly get the feedback. What does that look like and feel like? If you're needing people to deliver new all the time, you got to have something new and fresh, but you got to be able to bill to be able to cover what over those expenses are. For us, it was decidedly that we needed a comfort space. And what does that look like? From our chairs to our desk, the edge of the desk, even having a rolled edge. Mm -hmm. So it's not leaving an imprint on your arm when you're at your desk or you're on your computer. All of those things are questions that we ask. And certainly in my circles of influence, I'm regularly paying attention to that. Um, it's uh, it's important that we evolve. If I There's a couple of great restaurants I love to frequent in Phoenix. And you've been to one of them with me. Oh yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can just say it, man. Steak forty four. So Steak forty four. It's an amazing restaurant. If any of you listeners have been there, if you haven't, go for one. An, if you've been there, you know what I'm about to say. Yeah, their environment is impeccable. It's the same that it was, you know, five years ago when I went, and it is today. It's the same, and it's based on service. They wear black. 
They serve you in a very in, incognito way. They don't interrupt your dinner, your conversation. They don't say anything to you. They literally serve. And as they serve, they either are putting something on your plate or taking something off the table. They will only ask if you want another drink, if you happen to have an adult beverage. That's the only thing they'll ask. If it's iced tea or water, it automatically is filled, and you don't even see it happening because nope. it's a low dim, dark restaurant. Environment's the same every time, and they're dressed in black, so they're really not noticeable, and they're stealth. And it's an impeccable place to go. The food is impeccable. The environment is the same, and I love the fact that it is because their service is what matters not just their environment. Yeah, I love that place. Well, now I'm hungry, so thanks a lot for yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's awesome, man. Place, guys. So great podcast. I mean, so what are we learning? You know, we learned that the environment counts. We have to understand the people that are working there, and we cultivate that environment uh, and that atmosphere by physical surroundings, digital surroundings, and then the people who work there, of course. And then as leaders and 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 business owners. You have to stay constantly. Uh, you got to have your head on a swivel, man. You got to watch that environment, making sure that you are paying attention, especially to remote areas that that you got them all covered, and that you're constantly evolving that environment uh, to be successful. Great podcast, good good stuff, man. Thank you for those value bombs today, my friend. Value bombs, man. I brought the bomber. You did, you did, but <laughs> awesome for everyone who is listening on your favorite podcast platform. Do not forget to hit subscribe. That way you can get new episodes when they come out. Uh, leave us a comment. Always live, uh, love reading those. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you know, smash the like button on there. Give us a like. Hit the little bell for notifications so that we always know when new content comes out. You'll you'll get a notification. Watch Jim on his next awesome video. Hit the smash button, it. man. Let's hit go. More. More is better. Let's go. Let's contribute. Everybody with a gift, give it away. Give That's the gifts it. away. For everyone here at Service Evolution, thank you so much. Jim, thank you, buddy. Hey, always a pleasure to be here. Great content today. Thank you.